is Peter Raymer. In the last video, we looked at creating a custom service to call into Dynamics 365. Uh, today, we're going to expand on that. The last example was a simple example with a very simple request and a simple response. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover a more complicated example. What happens if you have an array of JSON data that you need to send in to a custom service? Uh, for example, maybe you need to send in multiple sales line data and you don't have a predefined number of uh, entities that you're going to send in. So let's take a look. The, we still need the same things that as we did last time. We still need a request object class, a response class, a service class, a service object, and a service group. Um, but we're going to take it a little bit further. Let's start by looking at the request class. Here is our request class. We have the data contract attribute property, um, and we have a variable for data area ID, just like last time, and a par method for data area ID. Well, in this case, let's pretend we want to send in a header object as well as a line object. The way we would send in an entire header object is we would create a class called RSM tut for tutorial order header class. We would then pass in that class into a par method and we would give it a data member of the name of our class. And we will look at that a little bit further in just a moment. So we've declared this class type up here in the class variable. Now let's go look at that class definition. We'll drill into here. This again has the data contract attribute member at the top. Then we have variables for each uh, data that we want sent in. The message ID, the sales order ID, and the customer account number. So we have three par methods. One for message ID, one for sales order number, and one for customer account. Each one has the data member attribute so that the system knows how to deserialize the JSON into this class. So basically, this is just a nested contract class that's inside of our um, main request object class. Our data member is going to be the name of the header, uh, uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in JSON in just a little bit. Next, let's say we want to have an array of data. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. We need to have a class um, for our lines. Here is my line class, and I'll show you what that looks like. But then we need each one of these attributes for the system to know how to deserialize this JSON into this object. So we have a data member attribute that specifies our name of our class. We have a data collection that tells what type it is and what class it is. And then we also have um, a string that's going to match our parameter of our par method and tell it what type it is. And then we will also specify the return type. So in this case I've got a list of class objects that we're returning. So let's go ahead and look at the line class object. The line class object, once I get it open, is going to look the same as uh, or similar to the header. It also has this data contract attribute. It has member variables for each piece of data that we want to send in and a par method for each piece of data. Sales quantity, item number, discount percentage, delivery term, discount, unit price, line num, or line amount, message ID, requested receipt date, line number external, and delivery mode. You'll notice that some of these are of different data types, and that's okay. Um, the system can handle this conversion for you um, as long as you pass in the right type. Okay, next let's look back at our uh, response class. The response class is going to look the exact same as it did 
in our last video, we're going to have three parameters or three member variables, success, error message, debug message that we can populate data in. So we have our error message parm method, our success parm method takes a boolean and returns a boolean, and a debug message that takes a string. So now let's look at how we would use this in a service class. In our service class, it looks like this. We've created a method named create, and it's going to take our request object and return an object of type of our response. Here I'm getting out of our uh, request object the data area ID, but I'm also doing something more with our request object. I am passing the request object's header class into a method called create header. If I drill into this create header method, what I've done is I can now take this class object just like I would with any other code and call its parm methods to get its values out. So I'm going to get the, the message ID out and assign it to a table buffers field. And I'm going to check for duplicates, but then I'm also going to assign um, several other variables. In this case, I'm setting the status statically and the customer account number, the sales owner number, and insert. So in this case, I have a header table that is going to act as my staging table for this information. Then later I can process this information. So if I go back to our main create method, we can then look at how we handle the lines. For the lines, I'm going to get out our, an array of our lines and uh, assign it to this variable uh, lines, which is of type list. I'm then going to turn this list into a list iterator and I'm going to while select through this list iterator each time getting the value which in this case is an entire class object out I will store it into a local variable and then I will pass that variable and the header class object into a method called create line and I will loop through all of those lines in the array. We can briefly look at what the create line method looks like. In this case, it's nothing fancy. I've got the header object and I've got the line object. I use the header object to get the message ID. And then for each one of the fields on our staging table, I'm gonna call parm method on each class variable to get each value out and then finally insert our staging table. Let's finally look back at our create method one more time. After we loop through all of the lines and process each one, creating a staging table record for each one of those line arrays, I'm going to call parm debug message and actually set what the message ID is. This is just informational. I'm going to set the success value to true on the response object. And in this case, I've wrapped the entire process in a try catch so that if there's an exception, I can mark the uh, response object success value to false and store the error message as well. Finally, then I'm going to return the response object. So a little bit more complicated than the last time. The main changes here are that I'm passing in an entire object or multiple objects instead of just some variables. And inside of those objects, one of those objects is actually an array of objects that I am looping through and then calling a method on to actually do some work. The rest is actually the same. So we can create a service object. And that service object will have a class named after my service class. And the external name can be the same thing. I then can have a service operation named after my method. So in my case, the method was named create, so I put the property of the method to create and the method name or, or the property name to be um, create. Then I create a service group. In the service group, I right clicked and said new service, and then on that new node, I set the service to the name of my service object, and I set the name to, to be the same thing for simplification. 
Next, I'll show you how that looks like as data coming in in Postman. Let's switch over to Postman now. In Postman, in order to make a custom service call, first we need an auth token. I've covered how to set this up and get the auth token in a previous video, um, but after we've gotten our auth token, we need a, a second post request to actually send in our request information. It will be of type post. The URL needs to be the Dynamics 365 URL, followed by the keyword API, slash services, slash the name of your service group, slash the name of your service, slash the name of your service operation. After we've got that, we need to set JSON data in the body. In our method for create, we are passing in a variable which is named underscore request. And so we need to make sure that this matches that name of that variable. So I have underscore request. Then we can pass in any member variables in the request class object here. So in this case, I just had one member variable, data area ID, the company of Dynamics 365. After that, we then need a tag, a JSON tag that tells us what class name it is. And this is going to match the data member. So if you remember in our request object, we had a par method that took a class object and this was its data member. Then inside of the RSM toot order header class, we had these three par methods with these three data members, message ID, sales order ID, customer account number. This all tells the system how to serialize this JSON into our class object. Then if you remember, we had our multiple lines that we wanted to populate. Here again, we have our data member of RSM tut order line class that contains our array of line class objects. The difference here is instead of a curly braces, we're going to use a square bracket to indicate that this is the beginning of an array. And then at the very end of our array, we'll have a closed square bracket. Then within that square bracket, we're going to have a curly brace and an end curly brace followed by a comma for each individual object and in the data it contains. So each value here, item number, sales quantity, these are all the variables inside of our line class object. We can set each one of those, add a comma, add another curly braces, and add another instance of that object. All of these values will become the array of our align class array. These will then get passed into the system uh, serialized into our class objects where we can then read from them using our PAR methods and iterate over the lines to either insert into a staging table or run some process directly and then finally return a response. So this is an example of a complex uh, custom service call that can take an array of JSON information. Thanks so much for watching.